University of Nevada, Reno student housing. Is it really worth it? Hi, this is Clint with the Stitzer Real Estate Group. And before we begin, I'd like to call your attention to two links on our blog. First, if you're interested in buying or investing in real property, please click on the search now link. If you're interested in selling real property, please click on the property valuation. So let's get right to it. If you have not driven up North Virginia Street through the UNR campus lately, you've got to do it because some beautiful buildings have been constructed. Here we have the Identity, which is right across the street from the basketball arena, Village at North, another beautiful one just a little bit south on Virginia Street being built. I mean, as a Reno resident, I get excited to see these beautiful developments happening because it just means great things are happening. And those are gonna be there forever. Those are great monuments. But at the same time, I look at those buildings and say, how much are students having to pay to make building that building on that location worth the money for some investor and developer somewhere in the country? And I started to look into it and what I found was, that for a two bedroom apartment, now this isn't in one of those buildings, this is just across all the student housing, an average of an internet search, we found that it's $690 per room. That's $1,380 per month for a two bedroom apartment near the university. Think about that, $1,380. I mean, that's a lot of money per month when you think about the houses that you could rent uh, around town or could have rented around town over the past last 10 years or so. For a studio, so maybe you're like, okay, well, I don't need a two bedroom, let's look at a studio. A studio is $850 a month. Now, if it's a one student, if it's two students, may, may think, oh, big deal, we'll bunk up. Oh, no, no, uh, that's $1,200 a month for a studio, not a one bedroom, a studio. $1,200 a month if two students living in that studio. Now, uh, you know, college kids are used to bunking up and living with each other, so th those living arrangements may not be the biggest deal, but golly, that's a lot of money. So I started thinking about it from the perspective of a parent getting ready to send their student to school and looking at whether they should, you know, take on student loans to pay these massive housing costs, or even from the eyes of, a, of an investor. Well, this is now what students see when they get ready to go pay for housing. So I decided to look at the real estate market and see what could be compared uh, from a house. Now, I, I just found this, it's available active today. It's September 21st, 2017. Um, and here's this house on 1750 West 12th Street. It is 3,178 square feet, uh, three beds, two baths. It's on 0.2 acres and downstairs, it has an extra family room and three bonus rooms. They're not legally called bedrooms because there's probably not, uh, you know, the adequate closet space. Uh, but basically there's six rooms in this house that's for sale for 388. So I thought, hmm, if I was a student and I had to pay $690 to live in a two bedroom apartment uh, that has parking limitations, which certainly has management, people telling me what to do, or if I could pay, you know, like, I don't know, 500 bucks to live in a house, which would I rather? Well, I'd choose 500 bucks to live in a house. You wanna know why? $190 when you're in college buys like 400 tacos a month and some beer too. So, I mean, when someone's looking at this in an investor perspective and say, well, I couldn't get that much because I don't have this beautiful building in a pool or whatever, $190 a month is a ton. So let's go ahead and underwrite this as an investment from the perspective of renting it for flat, or excuse me, I think $500 a room. We'll look more at it later. Um, the first is our purchase price, $388,000, uh, a down payment for investor loan, 25%, so $97,000 down, uh, a loan amount of $291,000, today's rates on a 30-year interest, about 5%, being conservative there, uh, taxes and insurance for this specific property, about $210, that creates a total payment of $1,772.15. Now, let's look at it from the perspective of the rent. Ooh, I knocked it all the way down to $450, not even $500, $450. So we're gonna undercut these apartment complexes by $240 per room. And you can stack kids in there if someone wanted to. The total rent on this house would be $2,700. Again, we're really undercutting the market for rents here. Um, maintenance and vacancy factor 10%, so you subtract $270 from your $2,700 rent. Uh, then you subtract your monthly payment for principal interest taxes and insurance, so $1,772. And then you have a net cash flow of $657.85. So now let's take it a step further and look at all of the elements of return of a rental property. Well, uh, of course, we've got our cash invested of $97,000 for down payment. We've got our annual cash flow of that 500 and some odd dollars per month 
equates to $7,900 a year approximately. That's an 8.14% ROI on your cash invested. How much of our debt gets paid down every single year? An average of $4,300 in year one. That grows higher as you get later into the loan because you pay less interest. Depreciation after tax or tax savings. This assumes a 30% tax rate. This varies, talk to your accountant, but about $3,880 in tax savings. And then of course, uh, your 3% capital appreciation, of course, isn't something you realize in cash every year, but uh, historically, properties have um, appreciated 3% per year over the long run. So a 3% per, per year capital appreciation is an added $11,640 in equity. What does that total equal out to an annual ROI on cash invested of 28.59%? Now, yes, a lot of people are gonna say watching this, um, geez, that's, that, that doesn't really make sense because it's a lot of money that you're talking about invested. So let's skip right to that point. Yes, the down payment is big. And managing a house requires time, it requires money, it requires risk. I managed a rental house when I was in college and I had more life lessons in dealing with my friends, enforcing contracts, taking care of the house, performing maintenance, keeping things together than I probably did in a lot of other situations. So for me, it was a big growing moment. Um, okay, so yes, it's a great learning experience and it has potentially large financial upside implications. Now to skip back to the top of this slide, let's just look at the alternative. What if you just go rent for four years as a student? Well, if I just go rent for four years as a student at $690 per month for 12 months, for four years, assuming I actually get done for school in four years, I've spent $33,000, $33,120. And usually for a lot of students that spent in student debt. So compare that to a parent or a group of parents who got together, maybe created a partnership and did the alternative. Look at the financial implications at the end of four years it can have for the parents or for the student. Kind of a nice flip, $33,000 in debt to a big financial upside with that ROI. Yes, it requires upfront cash. And yes, this video may not be talking to everyone who has students going to school. However, for those of you that are able and blessed enough to be able to do that, or could put a group of people and parents together to do that, or want to invest in the UNR student housing market, this is really something to take into consideration. This is Clint Stitzer with the Stitzer Real Estate Group, uh, thanking you for watching this video and wishing you great success in all your real estate ventures.